Dave lesz Sarah Kautumero Male, Lási Láti Tedelodél. Kamate Borbi Sarah Anglicka. I wrote my speech. Excuse me, I, I would like to, to, to speak in English. <clears throat> Hungary is a Central European state with a population of nearly 9.5 million. Around one-tenth of its citizens belong to the Roma national or ethnic uh, community or are classified as such by the majority. In 1989-90, after the collapse of the Soviet-type state socialist dictatorship, Hungary began to build a uh, Western time democracy. But it has failed after 16 years. After the victory of the so-called left, the far right carried out an attempted, to, uh, an attempted coup. It failed, but the fundamental pillars of the democratic institutional system, governance, impartial prosecution, and independent media were weakened. In 2006, the driver of a car accident at a Roma settlement, a teacher, was lynched by the angry Roma in front of his children. In the first place, the incitement campaign of the far-right media launched the neo-fascist party and established its paramilitary corps, the Hungarian Guard, which organized intimidation actions in Roma settlements. The paramilitary organization unleashed by the covertness of the ruling left was ridiculously coverted by an underground neo-Nazi society organized to hunt down to the Roma. Between 2008 and 2009, six Roma people, including one child, were murdered by Hungarian terrorists. The attackers target, targeted Roma settlements on the outskirts of villages, deliberately killing innocent Roma to provoke outrage and civil war. A total of 78 shots were fired, 11 Molotov cocktails were thrown at our houses, 55 people were in imminent danger to their lives. But the Roma of the whole country were terrified, and the Nazi raiding force could kill anyone born Roma. Mr. Horvath, Mr. Horvath yes, please. thank you for telling to us shortly how terribly Roma are treated in Hungary. I am particularly interested to know what should we do against these extremist politicians in Hungary and about the situation of Roma? What can be done about it so that Roma are not murdered, so that Roma are not victims of the, of the right-wing extremists, or what is being done now in Hungary, together with you and also the others that work uh, for the Roma community? If you want to, to, uh, to know what is the situation, what is the, what is the answer uh, the Roma civil rights movement, you need to, to uh, hear my speak because this is a, this is a process. This is a, uh, this is a important argument, what I would like to speak about the, the situation. <clears throat> uh, in my book published in uh, 2021, and tied the National Socialist Mishkots. Mishkots is a, it's my hometown. I wrote the tragic story of the persecution of Roma living in the so-called number streets in the middle of my hometown. 200 Roma, Roma families stood in the way of the government and the city stadium building, Panama and Megalomania. Under the pressure of local fascists, Half of the families were forced into the peri-urban Romani ghettos, while the other half received political refugee status in Canada. The criminals of ethnic cleansing that took place between 2014 and 16 
brought forward similar arguments as the Nazis before the Berlin Olympics in 1936, crime prevention. The cons conclusion of my analysis is that the present Hungarian state is an apartheid state from a Roma perspective. It's, a, it's very important for us. The test in, uh, in Miskolc was successful. The Romani housing estate considered to be a stranger, a migrant, migrant, could be driven out without any problems. Ethnic cleansing has also generated significant financial and political profits. The allegedly Christian politicians uh, of Hungarian apartheid drove the Christian Roma out of Miskolc, their hometown, as uh, they should have done with the refugee Muslims. In my book, I draw some parallels between the national socialist fascist, fascist uh, principles and the exercise of power and practice of Orban's illiberal democracy. This is the mixed ideology in the service of the state, the organization of the cooperative state is linked uh, to Mussolini. Orban put his own men uh, in every seat. Social conciliation is actually a party uh, assembly chaired by the leader. Belief in the general in command as a Führer principle, overcoming the democratic rule of law. Permanent verb psychosis is the main characteristic of the system. Social Darwinism. Racism, xenophobia. It's important to see <coughs> the most important thing is to create democratic political representation. This is the answer. What can we do in this difficult time? We, responsible Roma intellectuals and politicians, and I think the most important, the democratic uh, political representation. This is the hardest possible task in 50 years. Because linguistically, culturally, we are very diverse, we are fragmented, and we are unable to enforce our common political interests. Mr. Horvath, yes. I would like, first of all, to congratulate you for the valuable work that you are doing. And I have read a bit of uh, your work, but I must admit that I'm truly interested in fully re reading your books and to learn more from the experience that you have. Now, if you allow me, I would kindly like to also uh, speak a bit uh, our uh, next uh, speaker. And if you have in, uh, interventions, you can interfere. I would like to speak now with Alexandra Bahor, who is working a lot uh, in the UK, and she's very active in the field. And I would like, first of all, Alexandra, to know from you two things. One would be, how is the situation of Roma in Romania in general? And second, if you could focus during your speech, would be, how was the situation of Roma during pandemics? You might want to answer individually or together to these questions. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, I will start first with the pandemic um, because it was very interesting but not surprising what was happening back in Romania when uh, the media start to say about the Roma that um, they bring. And they think for sure that was happening in other countries in East o Europe. They blame Ro uh, Roma people, uh, migrants that come from outside, uh, from their own countries, back in their homes with the COVID. Media all the time, they, s uh, they show only um, Roma people uh, in the borders that comes from UK or Germany, and uh, they blame them that they were bringing the virus. After this, the restriction was coming. When the restriction was coming, again, media was showing only um, families of Roma that were violating uh, the restriction on the COVID-19. Um, a lot of police violence against of the Roma families, that they were beating children. 
uh, for example, back in my uh, city, Braila, uh, two of uh, teenagers, they were beaten uh, by the police only because they were in the corner in the street. Um, there were happening a lot of uh, things and the one of major was a journalist when they were saying about the Roma uh, that they need to go back in India uh, in that period. You, ca you can see when it's happening something like the blame is in the Roma all the time. Like hopefully that will find the good solutions to not happening again. Because if we we'll have in the future a pandemic, we need to be prepared to not happening against of this. And uh, about Brexit, um, what is happening um, back in um, UK, uh, the government uh, choose to do an online application uh, for the Roma and for the Europeans to be able to um, uh, to be able uh, to have the same rights and to stay in UK. The application was online. Uh, the Roma were having a lot of um, I, um, document issues because um, the embassy was closed in that moment. They, do, they cannot renew their passport to be able to do their uh, application. Um, also, they we know that a lot of barriers like English, digital skills, they, uh, because when you do the application, you need only online to show, uh, like a share code they will give you and to show that you are, um, you have the right to stay in UK. Um, when you have this share code, you can access uh, health, uh, education, um, and all the rights uh, to have a life there um, back in UK. Um, but mostly what I am worried is about the children, because this status is not transmissible to the children. Also, the parents, they need to apply for the children. And we have right now, uh, back in UK, a lot of children without any status, waiting to sort out documents, because the parents, uh, they were not able to do um, the passport, uh, like Romanian and the other things. Uh, Ms. Bahor, uh, so, as I understand from you, you are telling to me that the Brexit in the UK does affect Roma on different levels. Please correct me if I misunderstood. Yeah. I would also like to ask you, is there a danger of many people being forced to go underground or to stay without a legal status in the UK or even to be deported? What would you uh, say that it is the situation of the Roma in the current situation in yeah. the UK? We, uh, we, can so, uh, we can see right now in the border that uh, the police, uh, they do a lot of uh, racial profiling of the Roma. And it um, doesn't matter if they have a status, a legal status to remain there. Uh, they still, um, they stop them and ask question, where you go, why you are here in UK, if we have a job, if we stay with the family, and these kind of questions. But also we have a modern slavery that is grow up between the uh, Roma, unfortunately. Um, because they are vulnerable um, in um, UK, they cannot, without the uh, um, USS, without this uh, statute, a uh, limited leave to remain, and there are a lot of technical things that I will not um, tell you exactly. But if they don't have uh, the status, they will not have right to work, for example, or housing. Uh, this is why we have a lot of Roma that they are homeless back in London, uh, because they are not able to access the city council's houses. Um, we have um, a modern slavery, but unfortunately, this is... Uh, a issue also with people who apply and they have a status. Why? Because they don't have access to their online account. And there were a lot of campaigns uh, doing um, uh, one year ago uh, for us to have a physical proof, like a card. But uh, unfortunately, Home Office uh, rejected this. Thank you very much for Thanks. sharing with us your valuable work and your instincts. Mr. Althora. Yesterday, the Czech president, Peter Pavel, visited the memorial uh, uh, ceremony in Leti. How do you rate the importance of the president attending the uh, ceremony? And what did the president say about the situation of the Roma today? If you could share with us a few details about yesterday's ceremony, first of all. Thank yeah, you. Certainly. Um, I have to say that I, I have got big hopes for uh, the newly elected president, Peter Pavel. Um, he has shown a lot of uh, positive attitude towards Roma, whether it was uh, meeting Roma students, 
from Romea, whether it was attending uh, uh, this uh, meeting or co congregation at the co land where uh, concentration camp was taking place, or coming into the UK and meeting us uh, in the UK uh, and meeting Roma people in the UK as well. Um, what he said at, uh, at this event yesterday was uh, there was two important things. Obviously, he commemorated the victims of a concentration camp, but very importantly, he also mentioned uh, the very terrible situation in the Czech Republic where two neo-Nazis were released a couple of days ago and actually the, the, uh, Mr. Pavel admitted that uh, this was wrong, this was, uh, uh, it was horrendous and it shouldn't have happened. Um, you know, I don't know if you know the situation, uh, neo-Nazis threw a patrol, a Molotov cocktail into a house, a uh, young girl was burnt on I think about 70% of her body and um, the neo-Nazis were released after serving a third of their sentence. We are great to know that the president itself is concerned about the neo-Nazi regime and the current situation in Czech. We, I would further like to also speak about the, a severe case that happened to one of our uh, Romas in Czech. And that's the case that it's uh, well known in entire Europe, the case of Stanislav Thomas. After the death of George uh, Floyd in the USA, there was an enormous wave of solidarity, and his murders were sentenced to many years in prison. But what about Stanislav Thomas' dad? Did his dad have consequence for the perpetrators? How many years did they get, if any, legal consequences on this case? There were no legal consequences, uh, and it's actually a very sad case uh, on uh, two sides. One is the response from the Czech government and, and officials, uh, where the Czech president, prime minister, the, um, the inter minister of interior, the police president, everybody actually stood by the police officers and said that the police officers, they've got very hard job with those people and that they acted uh, professionally and correctly. Uh, even though obviously the, the modus operandi was identical to George Floyd. Uh, so there was uh, definitely, uh, you know, it was quite clear that the police officers killed uh, Mr. Stanislav. But what was also said is um, the response from the, within the Roma community and kind of overall from the society. What I would expect, in Czech Republic we've seen maybe 50, 100 people that came to demonstrate. In Macedonia I've seen there was probably 1,000 people uh, that came to demonstrate. This is something that uh, I completely agree with uh, Mr. Imer that was t speaking at the beginning where we need to really create some sort of anti-discrimination um, action uh, group, team, that will be not only proactive, but especially reactive, that will be reacting to those sort of anti-discriminatory or uh, those sort of uh, incidents and will be creating some sort of movements, some sort of um, non-violent protests to show the, the officials, the government, that we are not okay with this sort of treatment. First of all, I would like to thank to you for your valuable uh, remarks and also uh, recommendations on this specific case. And because you have mentioned uh, somehow the lack of uh, unity of uh, Romani communities in Czech compared to the, uh, for instance, the communities in Macedonia or other countries, my next question would be to you, uh, what is uh, the extent that there is an involvement or uh, even uh, as a sort of consultation of the people from the uh, Roma communities by the governments and institutions. So are the Roma communities or Roma representatives in Czech at least involved in the co uh, consultation uh, services uh, with governments and other uh, institutions on topics that uh, of course includes directly them? In Czech Republic, we've had um, a parliamentary council uh, as an advisory board uh, to the ministers and the prime minister, but this was only advisory board and they had no executive power. Um, this board has been now kind of uh, replaced and is being replaced uh, by uh, the new newly created position of a uh, Czech, uh, uh, the, the Roma ombudsman, kind of like uh, the Roma uh, plenipotentiary, uh, similar to Slovakia. Uh, this Roma plenipotentiary, uh, Mrs. Fukova, is now uh, creating a new team of uh, advisors to the government that are advising the government on education, um, social and economical affairs within the government. 
Thank you for your answer. Uh, Mr. Peter Tora, you were an advisor to the Czech government. Did you get the impression that uh, there was a general interest to listen to you and an openness to learn and change on, on the side, on the governmental side? No. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> now, thank you for your honest uh, response. I truly appreciate it. You live now in England. How do you see institutional racism in the British police and justice system? Is it as serious as in the Czech uh, Republic, if we could compare it to an extent? Yeah, um, I worked for the British police for 11 years, and um, I started uh, working for the police with the view that uh, the British police is absolutely racist-free. Um, obviously, you know, seeing the incidents like St Stephen Lawrence and uh, all the uh, kind of incidents. Like uh, I thought that uh, it's kind of a past, but uh, unfortunately it isn't. Uh, we've created in the British Police uh, Gypsy Roma Traveller Police Association, GRTPA, and we, have, uh, established, and we have identified loads and loads of malpractices within the police. Uh, police officers keeping family trees on Gypsy Roma travelers, uh, calling uh, kind of packages on uh, Gypsy criminality, uh, and, and, and you just name it, you know, the over-policing of uh, traveler sites, under-policing of uh, Roma people when they call police and the response to it like, oh, but you, they will sort it out between themselves. So the institutional racism towards Gypsy, Roma and travelers in the UK is probably, as they say, the last um, accepted uh, form of, uh, or tolerated form of uh, racism within the police. Thank you very much for uh, the valuable contribution that each of you have uh, so far uh, given to this panel. I would like uh, now to further move here to our other uh, guest. Uh, he is Johnny uh, Schleiter. Zischer Schmidt. Uh, excuse my Deutsch, I'm still learning, I must admit. He works in the field of social education as a mediator and as an educational counselor for Roma and Sinti children and in the training of teachers. He is the winner of the Hamburg Citizen Award for outstanding commitment to integration work. He is also the chairman of Romed Deutschland FAU an association that works at the interface of art, education, and social issues to promote the participation of Sintice and Romnia communities here in Hamburg. Uh, Mr. Johnny, was können Sie uns über Ihre Arbeit sagen? Also vielen herzlichen Dank erstmal uh, für die Einladung. Toben Sastet Hai Bachtale Shukar Sienale Ano Nevo Lumiano Kongresse Romenge. Ja, also in erster Linie bin ich ein Pädagoge. Ich arbeite als Bildungsberater für Roma und Sinti Kinder, bin angestellt bei der Bildungsbehörde in Hamburg und arbeite ich an der Stadtteilschule am Hafen. Und ich habe es auf jeden Fall gemerkt in den letzten zwölf Jahren, die ich an den Schulen arbeite, tatsächlich, dass das Bildung der einzige Schlüssel ist zu Erfolg. Bildung ist tatsächlich eine Chance, einfach die Chancengleichheit für die Kinder zu ermöglichen, vor allem auch die Roma aus der Armut, aus dieser diskriminierenden Situation, als Vollständige und Menschen der europäischen Kontinent zu sein. Und ich finde, dass das Bildung, was in Deutschland betrifft, also dass mich keiner hier falsch versteht, ich kritisiere keine Bildung in Deutschland, ja, weil äh, das Bildung in Deutschland prosperiert im Grunde genommen. Die Untersuchungen von dem Bundesministerium für Bildung äh, zeigen, dass es mehr Gymnasialten geht, es gibt mehr Studenten, es gibt mehr Abiturianten. Also wir reden nicht in Deutschland über schlechte Bildung. Dennoch, die Kinder, die nicht aus den höheren sozialen Schichten kommen, ja, die jetzt räumliche Möglichkeiten nicht haben, die Eltern sind vielleicht auch bildungsfern, ein sozialer Zustand in deren Umgebung bringt dazu, dass diese Kinder teilweise auch vernachlässigt werden in der Bildung. Und vor allem gibt es auch eine andere Gruppe der Kinder in der Bildung, die teilweise ausgeschlossen wird. Und ähm, durch unsere Arbeit halt versuchen wir, dass das Bildung jedem zugänglich ist, 
dass die Chancengleichheit und Teilhabe für die Roma das Wichtigste ist im Grunde genommen. Und vor allem äh, das Allerwichtigste äh, kommt auch, dass äh, die Sensibilisierung der Personal nicht in den Schulen zum Beispiel äh, stattgefunden hat. Die ganzen Vorurteile über Sinti und Roma sind tatsächlich eine tief verwurzelte äh, Anschau auf die Sinti und Roma, sodass das, äh, nicht nur diese soziale Lage, Armut und äh, äh, Eltern, die fern von der Bildung sind, die einzige Gründe sind, dass die Roma-Kinder schlecht in der Schule sind, sondern auch eine institutionelle Diskriminierung. Also das Kern des gesamten äh, Misserfolges, dass die Roma als Bildungsverlierer gelten, liegt in erster Linie an der Schule, an der Bekämpfung der Antiziganismus. Und ähm, es gibt natürlich auch ein paar Veränderungen, aber es ist immer noch nicht reicht, dass das auch die Roma sich als eine vollständige Teilhabe an der deutschen Bildung haben, sondern es, es herrscht immer noch ein großer Teil der Antiziganismus in der Schulen. Wenn ich darf fragen, woran liegt das Problem? Warum sollen wir noch weiter auf dieses Thema arbeiten? Können Sie ein bisschen erzählen von Ihrer Erfahrung? Also... Ich habe es auf jeden Fall verstanden, wie die Welt ist. Es ist ja nicht unbedingt von Abhängigkeit der Roma wille. Ob das jetzt Frieden herrscht, Kriege gibt, Veränderungen, Klima und sonst wie auch immer. Aber was mit unserer Welt passiert, von unserer Welt der Sinti und Roma, müssen wir erstmal auch von unserer Seite eine Initiative übernehmen. Eine Initiative der Einigung der Probleme, die man eigentlich auch artikuliert rüberbringt, dass die Mehrheitsgesellschaft auch ihre Bereitschaft zeigt, dass die, dass die Situation der Sinti und Roma verbessern sollte. Also wir müssen in erster Linie ein bisschen Verantwortung übernehmen, dass unsere Probleme sichtbar sind. Es bringt nichts, wenn wir über die Probleme unter uns sprechen und die beste Experten sind, sondern das Problem muss erstmal sichtbar sein. Sichtbar kann man ein Problem machen, indem wir endlich in den Schulen dieses Konzept der Blackbox aufbrechen. Wie geht es unseren Kindern an der Schule? Wie, funktion die, wie funktioniert die Inklusion an der Schule? Wieso gibt es viele Roma mit sonderpädagogischem Förderbedarf? Also die Institutionen definieren unsere Kinder als geistig krank oder lernkrank oder sozial krank. Ja, aber die Bereitschaft von den Schulen muss auch auf unsere Initiative kommen, dass wir auch bewusst darüber reden, dass Veranstaltungen stattfinden, dass Ausstellungen darüber irgendwie erzählen, wie ist die Lage tatsächlich von Roma-Kindern in den Schulen. Und ähm, ich glaube, der Bundesregierung und auch lokale Regierungen in Deutschland muss es klar sein, dass diese Roma- und Sinti-Kinder in dieses Land leben werden. Das ist eine Ressource für unsere Wirtschaft der Zukunft. Oder wenn wir alle bewusst vielleicht wollen, wir, dass die Roma auch keine gute Bildung in der Schule haben. Die Roma werden nie alleine aus dieser Misere der Bildungssituation alleine rauskommen. Wir brauchen pädagogische Konzepte an der Schule und zusätzlich außerschulische Orte, wo die Kinder stabilisiert werden, dass sie zumindest eine Basiskompetenz haben in der Bildungssystem. Weil es gibt ja tatsächlich Kinder, die nach der 10. Klasse nicht nicht mal bis 100 rechnen können. Die können nicht mal eine Drittel der DIN A4 Seite vernünftigen Deutsch schreiben. Und das ist einfach ein Zeichen dafür, dass dieses Bildungssystem angeblich wahnsinnige Schwierigkeiten hat, die Roma Community hier zu, äh, zu unterstützen und dass sie sie als Teil der Gesellschaft gibt. Also diese interne Blackbox Geschichte an der Schule muss aufhören aufhören und dass die Sichtbarkeit im Vordergrund kommt. Und wäre das ein positiver Vorschlag oder was empfehlen Sie? So, was, was können wir als äh, roma Vereins von der ganzen Welt oder ich als, äh, als Mutter, was kann ich machen, wenn ja. mein Kind einen I-Status in der Schule bekommt, nur weil er ja Roma ist? Also ich glaube, dass wir aufhören sollen, immer wieder neu den Rat zu entdecken. Alles, was wir vor zehn Jahren gehört hat, hören wir auch heute auch. Es geht jetzt nur darum, was wir weitergehen. Also als erstes zum Beispiel müssen wir eine politische Partizipation haben, in erster Linie. Weil wenn wir nicht zeigen, wie es uns geht, kein anderer wird das schaffen. Es gibt die selbstgenannten Präsidenten oder selbstgenannten Menschen, die auf eigene Kappe, ohne zu fragen der Basis, ohne der Befragung der Bevölkerung von Sinti und Roma, Entscheidungen in unseren Namen übernehmen. Das ist das allergrößte Problem. Und darüber müssen wir auch darüber diskutieren, weil das ist eine Art der Diskriminierung unter die Roma und Sinti. 
Das muss auch sichtbar sein, weil es geht um Zukunft unserer Kinder. Es geht um Zukunft unserer Existenz hier in Europa. Da müssen wir Verantwortung übernehmen. Ich bin dafür persönlich, dass ich als Indoeuropäer benannt werde. Im Grunde genommen, ich persönlich, es ist schön und gut, dass ich weiß, dass ich aus Indien komme, aber im Grunde genommen habe ich auch nichts, dafür, nichts davon. Sondern ich bin ein Indoeuropäer und meine Nationalität ist ein Europäer. Und solange es keine europäische De Deklaration gibt, dass es auch ein Land ist, da, weil die Roma sind die wahre Europäer, in allen Ländern gibt es Roma. Roma haben akzeptiert so viele Religionen, Roma haben akzeptiert so viele Sprach Sprachen. Roma haben trotz ihrer Situation nie die Gesellschaft in eine unangenehme Lage gebracht. Niemals. Ja? Und, das, und das muss im Vordergrund sein. Das muss im Vordergrund sein. Wir brauchen nicht mit, mit Waffen zu kämpfen. Wir brauchen mit Wörter und Wahrheit zu kämpfen. Und dafür müssen wir arbeiten und nicht nur für sich. Und Bildung als aller, aller Wichtigste. Vielen herzlichen Dank. Ich danke Ihnen für Ihre Arbeit. Und das ist so stark. Steht für unsere Kinder. Und das ist ein großes Thema jetzt. Vielen Dank. Und äh, jetzt, ich soll auch auf Englisch sprechen, wenn es geht. Dankeschön. So, um, it was a great pleasure to hear from each of you your different perspectives that you have and to hear what are the different problematics that our Roma are facing through Europe. It is also unfortunate that we didn't have the opportunity to speak today about more European countries, but in the next two days, we will have that opportunity, I hope. Now, I would like to ask if each of you would like to have a closing remarks or something that would like to, uh, to mention more, and then in the next seven minutes, we will close the conference and we see each other tomorrow. If somebody has something to say, no? Um, only I want to say that uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. It was very nice. To, I know that was a long day. And to stay and to hear us was very good for us. And um, what is important? Unity. Don't forget, we need to be close. We need to be together to find against of racism and discrimination. If we work segregated in groups with different issues, we'll not sort out uh, nothing. In the end, we need to work together. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, somebody else? Sie möchte noch etwas sagen? Ja, mein letzter Wort sehr gerne. Mein letzter Wort sehr gerne. Also ich, ich als ein... Ich bezeichne mich als, das ist auch legal, weil die Roma nie einen Krieg geführt habe. ich bezeichne mich als ein Roma-Nationalist. Und äh, ich finde es schade, dass ich ja nicht in Europa die Möglichkeit habe, mich zu identifizieren mit allen meinen Schwestern und Brüdern europaweit. Dafür würde ich vorschlagen, dass man von hier, von diesem Kongress, von heute, eine Initiative geht, dass wir eine, wie gesagt, wer sie, für mich, ich bin ein Indoeuropäer und meine Nationalität ist Europäer. Meine nationale Zugehörigkeit, ethnische, ist Roma. Ich möchte eine europäische politische Initiative haben, die Interesse der Roma an den lokalen Ebenen auch mal in, äh, installiert werden. Das heißt, diese politische Partei soll es auf der europäischen Ebene gegründet werden und aber alle Probleme, zum Beispiel die Probleme in Südosteuropa, die sind ganz anders als die Probleme von Roma und Sinti in Deutschland. In Deutschland haben wir kein Problem mit warmes Wasser oder, oder Toiletten oder Kanalisation. Ja? Hier haben wir andere Probleme. Diese politische Organisation soll sich in Deutschland auf die Deutschen, Sinti und Roma und hier lebende Roma konzentrieren. Die politische Organisation in Kosovo, Mazedonien, Rumänien soll sich mit Problemen von dort, aber es muss geführt werden von der europäischen äh, äh, Zentrale sozusagen sagen, die die Roma-nationale Interesse schützt, aber nicht private Interesse der Sinti und Roma geht. Und solange das nicht geht, wird nicht geben. Vielen Dank.